Planning for Donald Trump's possible second term is already underway in Washington, with the far right plotting extreme restrictions on abortion and immigration. The New York Times reports the, quote, nerve center for Trump 2.0 is the Conservative Partnership Institute, or CPI. The Times report says CPI has a $36 million budget and hosts weekly meetings of the House Freedom Caucus. But according to The Times, CPI's real goal is filling the, the Hill and White House with Trump loyalists. That's on top of the efforts by the so-called Project 2025, an operation led by the ultra-conservative Heritage Foundation that aims to staff the next Republican administration. Once installed, those Trump allies are prepared to ban abortion nationwide through the power of federal agencies. The Times, the, the Times reports that the attacks on reproductive rights would come from a, from a, quote, a variety of angles and could be stopped only by courts that the first Trump administration had already stacked with conservative judges. The Washington Post reports Trump's inner circle is also urging him to round up millions of undocumented immigrants and create detention camps at the border. Trump has even boasted about this potential mass deportation scheme, saying that he'll carry out more removals than any other president in U.S. history. And for the first time, Trump could actually have the yes men behind him to make that happen. Joining me now, Maria Teresa Kumar, president and CEO of Voter Latino and an MSNBC political analyst, and Minnie Timiraju, president of Reproductive Freedom for All, formerly Nayral Pro-Choice America and um, Birthday Lady. <laughs> Belated happy birthday. Thank you, Maria, let, I'm going to start birthday. with you. The front page of The Washington Post on Thursday had a jarring headline. Trump team sees camps for deported, mass roundups planned in a militarized border operation in second term. Um, what they have planned harkens back to what they did in the, what was done in the Eisenhower administration. This is morally reprehensible, but... Would it be legal or even logistically po possible, feasible, to do what Trump and his folks are planning to do? I think it's a, it's a moment for us to really have a frank conversation with the American people what Trump intends to do with America. This idea that he wants to go around and round up mm. undocumented folks is really a guise of saying America is going to target people who are not white. Because technically speaking, you do not know who is undocumented or documented in this country. Right. We already know what happened under the Muslim ban. We already know what he did with family separation. And I can tell you, as uh, you know, the head of Voto Latino, when he was doing the child internment camps, I also know for good fact that the individuals that they were targeting in Arizona, Nevada, and Texas were simply brown. And it was, uh, it was American Latino voters who got so angry that they organized, they mobilized, and they voted. And I think right now it's in a moment for us to have and hear from the president of the United States to have a rebuttal of what the vision of America is under Trump. Mm. He needs to remind the American people that our values as Americans mean that we are multicultural. And this idea that we are going to regress ourselves, whether it's because we're going to suppress the vote, whether we're going to suppress women's agency over their bodies, or whether we are going to target fellow Americans under the guise of immigration reform, is not only nonsense, but the only people who end up winning by tearing Americans apart are foreign actors. And we have to be very clear that this is going to be not just a moral stain on our current legacy, but our future legacy as well. Given what you just said, then, Maria Teresa, what does that mean for what has been reported that the White House is considering in terms of shutting down the border? This is Exe an executive order. Yeah, so I think that <clears throat> the moment... The this is where I have such a hard challenge right now with the way people keep talking about what's happening mm -hmm. at the border. Yeah. By the time someone gets to the border... That is not American doctrine. That's not American immigration policy. That is a broken system that needs to be addressed. And the reason that we have a flood of folks at the border right now is 45 years of American neglect in Latin America. We have to separate what's happening in the Western Hemisphere from the real issues. I don't know if you saw today in the New York Times, there was a whole article about how young Latino voters in Arizona are really timid about participating in the midterm in the uh, presidential elections because Biden hasn't spoken to those children of undocumented parents who's saying, wait a second, the only reason I got into this local game 
because my parents, who have spent good time and spent billions of dollars paying their taxes, are insecure. And they are trying to prevent another share for bio, let alone another Trump in the administration. Mm -hmm. So um, many, the other sort of assault that's happening mm -hmm. is the assault on on reproductive rights. And Trump has been playing both sides on abortion, mm -hmm. bragging that he was the one who put the judges in place that got rid of Roe. But then when the Alabama state Supreme Court said, handed down its decision on IVF, he's like, whoa, 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 I, su I support IVF. Um, and let's just to be clear, for those of you who don't, who don't know, the Alabama state Supreme Court said that um, the embryos are children. Um, this is terrifying on yeah. myriad levels. But what are the broader implications of this Alabama ruling? Have we seen uh, IVF clinics in other states say, you know what, maybe, maybe we should just hold off? We're definitely seeing the entire medical community, the reproductive assistance community, uh, checking all of their regulations and all of their advice to patients. We're definitely seeing uh, a core demographic important this election, suburban moms, freaking out. I mean, anecdotally, the organizations we work with, including our own, that are talking to these women in these suburbs and key states, uh, are hearing a ton of inquiry about what the status of IVF is in my state. But I want to take a step back and say, you know, it wasn't just the Alabama Supreme Court. Nikki Haley said em embryos are uh, babies. Babies, right. Multiple times, even when she tried to walk it back. And Donald Trump, let's be clear, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't know or have an opinion, but it goes to the original setup for this, this, this piece. The Project 2025 folks and the CPI folks, mm -hmm. they sure do know, and they are proponents and advocates and leaders in the personhood movement which is the life conception movement. A hundred plus members of the House of Representatives signed on to life at conception legislation. So you've got them all out there, you know, backtracking and playing both sides. But they have been very clearly on the side of extremism and imposing their theology on the American people for a long time. The difference now is they're ready for a Trump administration. They were right. caught a little off guard. But look how much damage they did even while being caught off guard. Right. And you mentioned CPI. And, you know, we all now know who they are oh, after yeah. they were in the shadows because yeah. on the front page of the, the New York Times last Sunday is when they featured this, the, the story and the report about how these folks are going to use a law from 1875, the Comstock mm -hmm. Act, as a way to prevent Mifepristone from being, um, from being shipped by mail. Talk about how this could... This, if that were to succeed, that would be a national abortion ban That's without right. Congress having to do anything. It's very similar to the tactic that they're using in the Smithy Pristone case that oral arguments are going to the Supreme Court in a couple of weeks. It's let's, ta let's attack medication abortion access. Let's attack abortion access in the states where it's legal so that we can you know, create so many barriers to care that it doesn't matter if it's legal or not. And actually, this is important, uh, and you know this from your time yeah. on, at Planned Parenthood's board, um, they've been doing this for decades before Dobbs. This is right. how they made abortion access so difficult for folks from my home state of Texas. Even with Roe as the law of the land, they have these targeted restrictions against abortion providers. So this is, a, this is another version of that, and they never intended to stop and say abortion is now in the state's purview. That was never the intent. That was just step one in a very long plan that starts with abortion care and it ends with birth control. The Comstock Act would be weaponized, not just for medication abortion, but to even have access to pills in the mail. Uh, they're going to come after the FDA. You know, I was reading through the CPI website, just, you know, for fun, oh, yeah. in, pre in preparation <laughs> to talk to you. Does it. Right. They have a whole section on attacking agencies for being too woke, and they have a whole brief on the FDA and its wokeness. So there's but a I lot we're going to try to do. Something that you're just saying is also is the hypocrisy behind yes. all of this. And I think Wild. that's what, I mean, Alabama at the same time is executing individuals with, with you know, the lethal weapon, the lethal gas that people are saying is actually not safe, that is, is not humane. While they're saying we're going to have IVF treatment, they're also know. cutting back yes. uh, uh, lunch programs. No, but lunch, lunch programs, programs for kids, right? right? For kids. So, it's like, so I think it's like it's they're time for criminalizing for, pregnancy. Right. So it's like, when are we going to call their bluff? Yeah. We called their bluff in 2018. We called their bluff yeah. in 2020. We called their bluff in 2022. And we were just talking right before we got on air how everybody's trying to be get tired. Like they don't they want us to be tired. Yeah. That is a strategy. But we have to make sure that we are present because those women right now 
wanting to do family planning in the future, that's one thing. You also know that few folks that have frozen embryos, they also use it for cancer treatment. That's what right. happens to those mothers that actually are trying to survive? So here's what I will say. We, can I have a, <laughs> real quick, and then we've got to yeah, yeah, yeah. go. What I've heard from these mothers and these moms in the last couple of days, they're fired up. That's right. This is actually amping up our base, and we're gonna we're gonna keep it up.